The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Hey everybody, welcome to the show into the great state of Ohio, where right now it's the calm before the storm. You see the folks at Double H Whitetails in three hours will start one of the biggest private deer farm events in the country. Before we get started, I wanna say that Ohio, well, it's one of the best states in the entire country for deer farming. On today's show, we'll tell you how the Ohio deer farming industry has such a huge impact on the state's economy and we'll tell you why deer farming has such a bright future in Ohio. We'll hear from folks that'll tell you how important the white-tailed deer is in their lives, as each of these people have different reasons that they value deer, and you'll see why we must do all that we can to keep the deer farming industry alive and well. But as the land in rural Ohio continues to be fragmented in size, successful hunting opportunities for the state's white-tailed deer hunter continues to diminish in much of Ohio. As the crowd here today continues to grow, it's clear that the excitement generated by the white-tailed deer is far greater than just for hunting. These folks love white-tailed deer, and it's for good reason. Over the past 10 years or so, I've traveled the great state of Ohio, visiting countless deer farms, and I've seen some incredible animals. I've also met some exceptional people along the way that all share the love of the white-tailed deer. Hey, my name's Ken. I'm a leathersmith here in Northeast Ohio. I'm Steve Chupp from Ohio, and I travel all over the United States doing deer auctions. Sean Schaefer, Executive Director for the North American Deer Farmers. My name's Jack Malarik. Hi, I'm Cindy. Ohio is an awesome state for deer farming. I'm Kurt Waldvogel. I've been deer farming nearly 30 years. Today we're at Ivan Hostetler's open house. He puts us on annually, and Ivan puts on a nice spread. He'll uh, feed everyone, of course, great food, have speakers, contests, raffles, and of course, games, and it's just a congregation of the deer farmers to get together, talk about their deer and events in the deer farming industry and, and just what's going on. Today's a special day because we're having our annual open house at my family's deer farm. There's a lot of out-of-state uh, deer farmers that come in for the uh, auction following the open house. This open house isn't just for deer farmers, it's for anybody that's interested in deer. We won't have just deer farmers here, but uh, the public is welcome at this event. There'll be a lot of non-deer farmers here as well. Some of the people in attendance are relatively new to deer farming, and this type of event provides these people with great information that educates them about the value deer farming brings to so many different sectors of the Ohio economy. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. It's not just the deer farmers that are impacted, they have employees, the feed mills, the, the fencing suppliers, the hotels, the restaurants. Uh, there's a litany of businesses that rely on what white-tailed deer farmers do as a source of income. Uh, I think it's a tremendous, it's not just the deer farmers that are impacted, it's the entire state of Ohio that's impacted. And with white-tailed deer farmers of Ohio, they're trying for fair and balanced regulation because I believe there is, there's a, a lot more that can be done for the economic impact with white-tailed deer. The bottom line is deer farms create jobs in the state of Ohio. 
I'm Dr. Shane Donnelly. I'm one of the owners of the Sugar Creek Veterinary Clinic in Sugar Creek, Ohio. Deer farming is big business in Ohio. Uh, it's vital to the local economy, brings tons of jobs here. It's vitally important to our clinic as a small business. The end market is so vast. We have a, a breeding market where we raise you know, big quality bucks and, and quality white-tailed does with good genetics. We've got a venison market, we've got a taxidermy market, a leather good market, and that's how our farmers stay profitable. My name's Ken. I'm a leathersmith here in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we work with many different types of leather. Uh, we specialize in white-tailed deer. We have a tremendous demand for clothing and uh, accessories made out of white-tailed deer. With all the leathers that are available, white-tailed deer is one of the best leathers to use for garments and gloves. It's strong, it's durable, wind resistant, has a very long life. The benefits of using farm-raised deer over wild deer is that farm-raised deer, you don't have the imperfections in the hide, fly bites, scratches, scars and such, and you don't have all those holes to work around. It's really hard to get a deer without putting a hole in it. As a professional taxidermist in Ohio, uh, hunting preserves are a very important part of our income. There's over 20 different preserves in the state and thousands of deer are taken every year. And at four to five hundred dollars per mount, it's, it's a valuable tool for our uh, annual income. So we, we do appreciate the fact that there are uh, hunting preserves. Deer farming and hunting preserves right here in Ohio impact the economy in a big way. Whether it's tractor sales or hardware, rental cars or your local veterinarian, taxidermy shops and feed stores, or fast food restaurants, and obviously all kinds of hunting related equipment. There's even a vibrant market right here in Ohio for venison at the retail level. I'm Rebecca Lyon. I own an urban homesteading shop in Columbus, Ohio, City Folks Farm Shop, and we cater towards uh, people that want to create their own homestead, need help starting homesteads, gardening, having chickens, and raising small livestock. Uh, we currently sell uh, grass-fed beef and chicken, and we have just started selling Ohio whitetail venison, which is difficult to get. Customers want Ohio-raised venison. Uh, they know where it comes from. They may even know the farmer. We want to bring that to them. Uh, they don't have access to to fields to hunt or uh, they maybe just don't want to go through that process. A lot of people are, are hunters and have an ample supply of venison from their, from their hunting, but a lot of people don't hunt and want to buy venison as a healthy alternative to beef or other meats. That's why the White Tail Deer Farmers of Ohio is pushing to expand the meat market so more people in Ohio have access to some of the best and healthiest meat in the state. The reason uh, people would want whitetail Ohio raised venison is it's high in protein, high in B vitamins, low in saturated fats, more so than beef. It's lower in cholesterol than chicken and turkey. Venison is a healthier alternative to beef. Hi, I'm Cindy and we have an organic greenhouse and farmer's market here at our facility. We sell organically raised vegetables and flowers, and we also have an area of our store that we sell non-GMO food products, meat and dairy specifically. One thing that we don't sell is venison, and we would love to sell Ohio raised venison, but there's not enough supply at this time. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. All right, we're all huddled up underneath this tent like a bunch of wet rats. I mean, it is flat pouring down rain. And although this is a private event at Double H Whitetails, tomorrow and the next day, uh, the Whitetail Deer Farmers of Ohio are going to have their annual sale. And so this precedes annual sale, kind of gets everybody excited. And Ivan has a chance to show off the deer on his place and everybody right now is trying to keep from getting too wet. A lot of people think that the only reason a deer leaves the farm is to get hunted. That's not the case. Um, a lot of animals leave the farm as breeding stock and live out their entire life on the deer farm and, and, and never hunt it. There's also the meat market, um, leather goods, and these leather goods literally go all over the world. What really turned me on to preserves was uh, a negative experience I had in public hunting. I was hunting with a guide uh, in a, uh, a, a park area that was open to hunting in our community. 
Uh, I'm looking through uh, my binoculars at, at what I hope is a turkey coming towards us, a gobbler. And uh, what I actually see is the uh, barrel of a shotgun pointing directly at us in our, our decoy setup. So it was at that point that I just said, this isn't a situation I ever want to put myself in again. And again, I, that's when I started looking at a preserve. And what I found when I added up the dollar per hour away from my office, away from my family, was that it was two to three times what the expense is uh, for hunting at a hunting preserve when all of that work is done for you. You still have to be quiet, you still have to be scent free, you still have to be in the stand when the deer walk by. And if you're not any of those, uh, the, the, the hunt just doesn't happen. Uh, one of the things that I hear most often is, I don't hunt because I don't know how to, I don't have the equipment or access to the land, or I'm afraid. To me, that's the place where a hunting preserve is, is very valuable. Many people think that preserve hunting is just for the wealthy, when in fact, Preserve hunting is very cost competitive with hunting in the wild. The advantage of hunting in a preserve is not just for the, the hunter, it's also for the animal. Bucks at a preserve are hunted an average age of three to four years, while their wild counterparts are shot at 18 months of age on the average. The advantage of hunting in a preserve is not just for the, the hunter, it's also for the animal. Bucks at a preserve are hunted an average age of three to four years, while their wild counterparts are shot at 18 months of age on the average. The good thing about deer farming is you can use a piece of property that otherwise wouldn't be good for anything else. In this part of Ohio, uh, we have a, it's a large Amish community here and, and deer farming, it's just perfect for, for them. One thing that's unique to this part of Ohio is the Amish lifestyle. The Amish community here lives a more simple life than most of us in today's fast paced world. The Amish lifestyle is different than most of ours and part of the Amish lifestyle is working in the deer farming and hunting preserve industry right here in Ohio. Deer farming and hunting preserves help support the Amish lifestyle and it's a big part of their way of life. You know, one of the good things about deer farming, matter of fact, a great thing about deer farming is the fact that you can deer farm on a marginal piece of property. For example, here's a road that goes back and forth and there's a drainage ditch going underneath the road. You can take marginal property and turn it into a profitable deer farm. You can take property that nobody else would do nothing with, turn it into a deer farm, make it productive, make it nice, have an economic impact in that township, in that community, in that city. It's just positive. So tell me what do you think the best thing about deer farming is? Oh, it's definitely family. Getting your family involved and uh, having the kids out here helping us. Then you tell me, what do you think the best part of deer farming is? Being able to tell your friends that I own bigger bucks than you do. <laughs> well, you got some big bucks, all right. Yeah. So what do you do around here? I mean, do you, you just come look at them or do you actually help with the chores? Um, my job around here is to water the deer and dad feeds and later on, I bet I'm going to be doing all of it later on. And, um, being out here with the bucks is, and the deer, it's fun, and then you just, they're so nice. Everybody's nice around here, and then the deer, they, they're just, they, they're really good. Do your neighbors like them? Oh yeah, everybody. They come up here and see them, they love it. I know, how could somebody not like this? I, I think it got something wrong if they uh, don't. Yeah, I mean, this is like the coolest thing. I think if you've never been to a deer farm, you don't have to have a big place. Y'all don't have a big place, but you've got a pretty place, some really, really nice deer, and I'm proud mm -hmm. of you. But tell me the hardest part, the toughest part being a deer farmer, what is it? It's coming out here in the winter when it's freezing cold or it's pouring down rain. You still have to feed them because these guys, they have to live and they're counting on us to feed them. And so coming out here when it's pouring down rain or it's ice cold below zero, and coming out here to water, and a lot of times breaking ice, now we have the heaters, but um, breaking ice and all that, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's, it, it goes through. It's fun. I'm proud of you. Yep. Good job. Thank you. The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. Here in Ohio, um, as well as a number of other states, they're forcing us to kill some deer that 
were supposedly exposed to a positive deer that had CWD. The only way to test that is approved by USDA is to kill them and, and test the, the brain stems. Some people try to set the perception and it's just negative thinking uh, that, oh hey, deer farmers or whatever, you know, they spread diseases, they're diseased animals. Well, let me, let me tell you something. The proof is in the pudding. We're TB uh, credit, brucellosis certified. We test everything, we vaccinate everything. We 100% CWD test every animal that dies. How in the world can anyone deter anybody from starting a family farm? How could you deter anyone from that making an honest living? We work every day to keep our animals alive. And of course you're gonna lose animals and it hurts you every time it happens. But when you intentionally have to put them down to do the testing on it, that is one experience you don't want to you don't want to go through. That's why this pilot test is so important to come through as a live test, so we don't have to kill perfectly healthy deer. The deer farming industry is so vibrant in the state of Ohio that the national headquarters for PBS Animal Health is centered here. PBS Animal Health is an e-commerce retailer that sells products for animal nutrition all over the United States. Uh, the cool thing that I like about it is they have a section in their catalog specifically geared towards deer farming. My name is Suzette Matthews. We sell animal health products nationwide and the whitetail deer market is an important part of our business here at PBS Animal Health. Deer farmers from around the nation can buy a wide selection of deer supplies from us and we ship it out the same day. We understand animal health products, and we understand the needs of animal owners. Land fragmentation does have a negative impact upon wildlife habitat, and a negative impact for those that enjoy seeing wildlife. Fortunately, many private landowners across the country, and also in Ohio, are choosing to help protect their land and wildlife habitat from further fragmentation by creating wildlife preserves. And when these preserves are created, deer from deer farms that go into stocking these preserves are not only certifiably healthy, but they have some of the most desirable genetics as well. Each year, nearly a half a million deer hunters head to the field in Ohio with approximately 200,000 deer taken annually. There's no doubt, deer hunting is big business right here in the Buckeye State. Hunting pressure on the Ohio deer population is hard in many areas, and it's for that reason that hunters are choosing to hunt in wildlife preserves. Wildlife preserves offer what public hunting can't. Hunters who hunt on wildlife preserves have more land per acre to hunt than hunters who hunt on public land. With more land to hunt per hunter, pressure on animals is reduced. Consequently, the hunters hunting on wildlife preserves enjoy seeing more game and enjoy a better hunting experience. The farm-raised deer in Ohio are some of the healthiest deer you can find anywhere. Our Department of Ag regulates the Chronic Waste and Disease Program, the Tuberculosis Program, and the Brucella Program. The question arises as to who owns the deer in Ohio. The answer to that all depends on whether a deer is on a deer farm, wildlife preserve, or free-ranging deer. In some states, deer in deer farms are not owned by the property owner, but rather owned by the state. Here in Ohio, because we're regulated by the Department of Ag, the deer farm owners own their own deer. Deer farming's future depends upon fair regulations that not only benefit the deer farmer, but benefit the general public. And many politicians around the state are realizing the important role that the deer farmer plays right here in Ohio. The future of the white-tailed deer depends upon the future of hunting and farming. Hunters and farmers share a common love of the land and the animals. And their goal is to preserve both hunting and farming for future generations. If you have any questions or comments about today's show, I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me an email. My name is Keith Warren, and thanks for watching Deer and Wildlife Stories. If you have any questions about deer farming in the state of Ohio, you can contact the White-tailed Deer Farmers of Ohio.